right now there's someone else that is being trafficked. This is modern day slavery. Who's being victimized the most? The minute I was in here, I was already being trafficked. She said, you're gonna please my friends sexually. And that was seven days a week? Yes. It impacts everyone. They say that one in five runaways reports being forced into sex trafficking. Exactly. You can sell drugs once, but you can sell a five-year-old girl again and again. It's all about money. It's all about money. Now, trafficked. WPBF 25 News investigates. Good evening. I'm Tiffany Kenny. At any given moment in any South Florida neighborhood, lives are being torn apart. Tonight, we expose the untold stories of courage and resilience as we investigate the fight against sex trafficking. We begin with the story of a woman who was forced into a life as a sex worker before she was rescued in Palm Beach County. My name is Cindy Alvarado, and I'm a survivor of sex trafficking for six and a half years. Let's talk about your story and where it all started. I was in Costa Rica and I knew an American friend for a few years and she called me to offer me a babysitting job. And um, she offered to pay the visa, the flight ticket, so it just sounded really good. And then what happened when you got here to the States? The minute I wasn't here, I was already being trafficked. So the minute you got off the plane, here in the States, your trafficker was the one who picked you up at yes. the airport? Yes, she said, you're gonna please my friends, uh, sexually, you are going to do what I tell you. They're going to give you money. You are going to give that money back to me. And if you don't do that, then uh, something can happen to your kids. Can you explain what your daily life was like while you were being held captive by this trafficker? I could wake up early in the morning. We needed to be ready at 8 o'clock. And then when I say we, it's because I was never alone. There were other girls working. And uh, we end up usually at 8 o'clock p.m. or 10, 11, depending on how the day pick up. And it's usually, you know, clients that pay for an hour, half an hour, you know, or just say 15 minutes of your time, per se. And you were in an apartment with other women and yes. the clients of the trafficker would just come in and out all day long. Exactly. Who were the people that were coming and going? Regular people. And doctors, lawyers, teachers, counselors, um, people uh, working in call centers, just regular people, um, people that drive trucks, uh, uh, police officers, sadly. And that was seven days a week? Yes. Yes. Seven days a week from eight in the morning until eight at night, sometimes even later? Yes. Every day. That is horrific. Yes. Every day. How did you survive that? I mean, how did you shut your mind off to be able to endure all of that? Well, the mind is really an amazing machine that we have. You just get numbed, you know, like it's just another person and another person, and you start becoming or feeling that you are less than a person. So you start getting quiet about it. The mind just goes away. You are like physically there. You're functioning, there's things happening and you probably are having a conversation with somebody, you know, saying whatever, you know, like, yes, I'm ready, this and that. But uh, your mind is far away from there. Cindy, you were under the control of your trafficker for over six years. What gave you the courage to break free and to ask for help? I started asking for help um, early on the stage of my trafficking years, but um, I was asking in the wrong place. And you told some of these people that you were being held against your will. We just cursed them. <laughs> and then that you would never see them again. I never see them again. I was hoping that besides to scare them, just make an anonymous call, doesn't have to tell everything, you know? But yeah, it scares them. And that tells a lot about the conscience they have of what is going on. <laughs> you know, like they do understand that this is not a good thing to do. Right, in your mind, there was no way out. Of course not, I'm a criminal. In my mind, I just became a criminal in another country. 
Ugh. That is just terrifying. Yes. And you were 28 years old. Yes, with two kids back in my house that I just needed to go back to and make sure that they were safe. But now I understand that's the mechanism the traffickers use, blame and shame use, so then you don't ask for help. To people who say, why couldn't you leave earlier? Why couldn't you just run away from the apartment, run away from the hotel? What do you say to them? The reason why a lot of survivors cannot run physically, you know, and get stuck in it is because there are threats made to them. And it's usually to members they love. In my case was, I don't want my kids to be harmed at no cost. I'm not gonna be the person who make them at that risk. There's so much manipulation mentally that's going on with the victims. Yes, yes. It, it must make you feel alone in many ways. Yes. Yes, actually, back then, you know, when I tried to kill myself, um, doctors, nurses, they were not trained for human trafficking, which they are now, you know, which is wonderful. I tried for a long time. But um, one day, um, one nurse recognized me for another county, and he's like, I think I saw you. And he told me, here in Palm Beach, he told me, like, I know who you are, and so we're going to talk. And he told me about human trafficking. He told me about what it's like, and he gave me a whole, like, two pages of nonprofits and institutions that could help me here. I reached 911. I called, and I said, I'm a prostitute, and I want you to arrest me. That 911 agent was trained on human trafficking, so she understood. And that's when they told me, you are a victim of human trafficking. We're going to help. And how are you today when you look back on what you had to endure? And it must be so upsetting to think about those years that you lost. It's a whole process of healing, you know, to like understand what really happened. It's a whole roller coaster of anger and accepting and then getting motivated into like, okay, what is next? You know, I have to go somewhere else, do the next thing. And the next thing is to help other people. Why is that important to you, to be able to help survivors? I think it goes back to, I wanted somebody for me, and I couldn't have that somebody. So I just want to become that person. No matter where the person is in their own journey of healing, I just, like, would love somebody to, like, kind of like grab me for hand and, okay, let's do this, this is plan A, B, and C. I want to be that person for them. You want to be the person you never had? Yes. Today, Cindy is a mentor to other survivors. She also testified against her trafficker who was convicted and sent to prison. But tracking down these criminals takes more than the hands of the law. The new eyes now on the streets. Tonight, President Joe Biden.